Welcome back. So we're talking about machine learning uh, models from data, and we want those models to be accurate and fast, uh, and especially to be useful in the future. And so I want to dig in a little bit more into what I mean by useful in the future, what it means for a model to be generalizable, uh, and things like that. So when I say data from the past being useful in the future, uh, when I say past, I really mean uh, my training data. So I have some training data, data, let's say. And in the future, this is where I'm going to be testing. Uh, there's kind of this testing uh, data. And this is one of the key conundrums in machine learning is if I had the future data, <laughs> I mean, would I need a model in the first place? So I often don't have access to the future. I don't know what I necessarily will see. Again, this is where the expert human comes in to, to make those decisions about whether the past is representative of the future. And so often what we do is we take the data we have, our, our data. Let's, I'm just going to say we've got a bunch of data. And what I'll do is I'll chop that data up into some portion that I'll use for training. So this is my training. And some portion that I'll use for testing. Now this is all coming from my historical data, the data I've collected. This is my testing data. Um, this doesn't have the future. The future is kind of out here. Um, this is the future. But what I'll do is I'll take my, my data that I have and I'll split some of it up and I'll use it for training. And I won't use any of the testing data when I'm training my model on this training data. And oftentimes I'll use something like 80% of the data uh, for training and maybe I'll use 20% of the data for testing. Uh, and then what I'll do is I'll take the model that I've used in blue here and I'll apply it to my test data and I'll see how well it, it was able to predict the future or this data that I held out and didn't use for training. So this is a cornerstone of machine learning. This is an absolutely critical uh, technique called cross-validation. Um, cross-validation. And oftentimes what I'll do, because I, I might only have a limited amount of data, and this might be such a small test set that I don't have enough uh, information here to be statistically, to, to know statistically how well I'm doing. And so what I might do is take my data and randomly reshuffle it and take 80% for training and 20% for testing. I might randomly reshuffle it again and do it again and again and again. And I might average over a uh, hundred times of this random reshuffling training and testing. Uh, and so that's called k-fold cross-validation. So k-fold just means how many times I randomly reshuffle my data and use some for training and some for testing. Okay? And this is very useful for certain types of tasks. Um, if I have a task that's kind of interpolatory in nature, if I'm interpolating my training data, if, if what is in the future or in my test set is an interpolation, some, some kind of nonlinear function of what's in my training data, I can probably build a really good model uh, using this cross-validation framework. But if I need to extrapolate uh, into the future, that's actually really hard to do in general with machine learning. So I like to think about, let, let's draw a little picture and, and do an example. If I have a, a cannonball trajectory, and so it's this parabolic trajectory, and I train my machine learning algorithm on this blue region, it's actually really hard to develop a machine learning algorithm that will correctly extrapolate the behavior of that ballistic, uh, ballistic trajectory. Okay, so this is something that's an example that's not an interpolation where you really need to generalize and understand the principle of what's going on. Um, but in cases where you just need to interpolate interpolatory problems. Uh, image classification, audio, voice recognition tend to be in that category. If I have enough data, enough training data, then most problems can be made uh, interpolatory, or a lot of them can at least. Okay, and so uh, this idea of cross-validation or randomly reshuffling your data so that you can use some for training and some for testing is how you can at least test that your model might be useful in the future. Now, I'll give you a counterexample. Another counterexample that's really challenging and it's actually very relevant uh, is climate modeling. So if I want, let's say I have 100 years of climate data. 
Okay? And if I do this random selection, uh, let me draw another picture. So I've got 100 years of climate data. What I could do is randomly choose 80% of my data across all of those, those years. So I might pick 80% of my data um, in that 100-year period. And I might pick the other 20% of the data kind of in between those blue regions. And as you might expect, I can actually build a pretty good model based on this blue data that I can use to interpolate uh, and predict this red data in the middle. But that's not actually a very fair thing to do because that's not necessarily representative of what the actual future is going to look like because the actual future is not kind of an interpolation of what I've seen in the past. We know that certain systems are, are what are called non-stationary. They're changing as time goes on, and the past is not going to be representative of the future. And so in the climate modeling example, this is actually a much more fair thing to do. If you have 100 years of data, you actually have to train on a chunk of that data, a consecutive chunk of that data, and test on the next or the previous consecutive chunk of that data. And this is much harder because the physics here are, might actually be different than the physics here. This 20 years of climate measurements are probably physically fundamentally different than, than these 80 years. And so you have to be really careful uh, if, you're, if you're doing something that you think might be an extrapolation that this can give you misleading results where your, your cross-validated error is low, but you're not predicting the future. Okay, so that's, that's another thing you have to think about. Um, often that would be kind of a, a manifestation of overfitting. Um, in general, I can overfit my model to the training data in a way that it still won't generalize to the future. Okay, so these are all uh, important aspects of how to build a model that is useful in the future. So what the future means, if it's an interpolation, uh, if I've seen everything I'm ever gonna see, like I have all of these examples of cats and dogs, and every cat and dog in the future is going to look kind of like the cats and dogs I I've, I've have in my training data, then you know, this interpolation cross-validated machine learning model is going to work just fine. If you're trying to predict something you've never seen before in a process that might be changing, that's a lot harder. And you might even have to bake in physics or build your models to be generalizable. Okay, thank you.